Hello and welcome to this second video in which we are looking at the Archery Cub management software that uh, I'm writing. Uh, my name is Martin and uh, if you watched my first video you'll have had the full pitch but I work for a company called Revelation Software and we provide a product called Open Insight which is an application development suite uh, with its own back-end database and as a hobby software developer I've gone on to build a complete uh, solution for managing archery clubs and the purpose of this particular video is not to go through everything that's in the day-to-day -day side of things but it's to look at the tournament module. Now the tournament module was put together because I had a, um, an unfortunate situation where when we were working with a multiple round tournament um, we got into some problems with doubles and triple rounds with so many fin people finishing their rounds at the end of the day and time was getting on and we didn't have many minutes left um, in the hall that we'd hired and lo lots of things contributed and it, it just wasn't a great um, situation to be in and many of you that are in the archery world will no doubt have been to tournaments and seen the um, club chairman or whoever's giving out the awards at the end um, hitting problems where things have, have gone slightly wrong uh, giving a medal to somebody that um, shouldn't be getting it because somebody else got a better result. You, you've been there, you've seen it. Um, I've been there once and I'm not prepared to go there again. I then started, after the, uh, the, the problem that I had, to look around at the commercial solutions that were available and found that they were not able to give me the functionality that, uh, that I needed um, and I could never work out how to configure, configure them properly. So in my view, the ones I was looking at didn't work for me. Um, a lot of people said, you know, using Excel, well I tried to do some things in Excel and then uh, things in there started breaking as well. I thought, ah, this is it. I've got the tools, let's go and create my own solution. So this is what this application is all about. It's a tournament management module with a wizard, but it manages multiple sessions, all your your archers, all of the rounds that they're shooting. There will be a target map in there, it isn't there at the moment. That's, uh, the software is still being developed and that will come. Uh, we've got entry, um, score entries and leaderboards and tournament reports and everything. So. Uh, enough of the waffle, let's just close out of PowerPoint, let's run up software and have a look at it. Right, when you log into the Archery Cub Management software, you'll go to the main window. Clicking on the Tournaments window will bring you to this window that we're looking at here. Very similar to the one that we were working with in the other video. So you've got your menu bar at the top, your toolbar, which gives you access to all of the features within this module. And uh, of course, this image can be changed um, uh, to suit your own requirements. Um, you can initially just come in here, hit the wizard button, and the wizard will take you through setting up your tournament. Um, that's, this is still being developed, so these pink boxes will disappear. They're, they're uh, invisible controls, they're just there for me while I'm developing it. Um, but you simply fill in the prompts, click next, and it will save the records and create the tournament for you. Now, I'm not going to do that in this instance because I want to look at the individual windows and we can do that using these buttons across here so the first thing you want to do is to set up your tournament blue peter fashion i've got a tournament that i've already set up and that's the one that we're going to be using for this video so i can select my club name and again for most of the cases it's a, a drop down and if i was to click on the blue text it will run up the uh, the, the club record so i could create a new one i need to give my um, event a title so normally that would be a Portsmouth round, a competition or an open Portsmouth, closed Portsmouth or whatever round that you've got. And you have to give it uh, a start date. And these two bits of information, the system will then combine for use elsewhere in the, in the system. And the start date is all important because for some of the reports, you'll be prompted for the date of your tournament. So that, that's quite an important one. We then get the venue. Yeah, you don't need to put that in if you don't want to, but it's quite nice to keep a note of, of where your tournaments took place. And obviously the status, whether it's an open event, a closed event, record status event, or it's an event that you're hosting for county, because we very often at AOR host events for NCAS, uh, Northampton County Archery Society. So it's just, again, uh, just memorandum more than anything else. 
then the number of sessions that we're going to have within this tournament and the number of positions per boss and the first boss number and the last boss number that's going to be used by the target map which we haven't actually got in the system yet that's yet to be uh, developed and the number of archers in a team and the number of ladies that are required in a team um, you don't have to have teams but normally at AOR we say that any team has to have four archers and it has to have a minimum of one lady in there we don't tend to differentiate between juniors and seniors um, but uh, you can do that if, if you want to. We then have the sessions. Now I've already got two sessions configured in this system. This would normally be blank, but you can see I've got two sessions and the uh, times and no actual entries in there for the moment. And the rounds that we're going to be shooting. So in this particular tournament, we're going to be shooting Portsmouth in the morning and Braze in the afternoon. And the officials. So I can see that my tournament officer, Jonathan, he's going to be looking after this tournament. I'm the presiding officer as chairman of the club. And we've got a lady called Janice Long, who doesn't actually exist. But she's going to be our Lady Paramount on the day. And I've selected our two judges who have served Archers of Rawns really well over the years. So once we've got our tournament configured, we can then go on and set up the sessions. Now again, um, these are all the sessions that we've got in the system with the most... Um, most recent one at the top here so I'll just grab 17 for instance this is going to be the second session in this particular tournament and I've got my assembly time and my sighters and I can see that I've already got um, four archers that are registered for this particular tournament um, and uh, shooting in, in this particular session and if I go and have a look at the other session then you can see that I've got those same four in there just, just a, a few archers not very many just for test purposes so that's setting up the sessions within our tournament so then we obviously need to add some entries into the tournament and I'll open up uh, Lawrence Carbs we were working with her yesterday um, so we can see that her ID for this particular tournament is 168 um, we then link the tour this um, entry to an individual and I can see that she's got a GNAS number so I haven't got to chase her for that. Um, I've actually had her money in so £8 has been paid and she paid that by cheque so just capture that information. Uh, she hasn't signed in yet, she's not going to be a partner um, with somebody else. If there, if she was then it's very simply a case of ticking the box, filling in the boxes. So which tournament are we working with and in this particular tournament um, I've got these people that are set up to um, be uh, partners. Now, you can't actually set that up initially because that pop-up is driven by the round. So if you've got round people that are uh, set up for um, a couple, then you'll be available in that pit list. You do have to come back to, to that a little bit later. Um, whether this archer's got a disability or not, maybe you've got to cater for a wheelchair, put that information in there. Um, obviously pick a tournament we're working with the test one and when you configure rounds this table will automatically populate so I can see that I've already got Lauren in for round 220 and 221 those records session one Portsmouth um, and this particular score counts towards a single and a double and the team and C would be for a couple and three would be for a triple and the second round only counts towards um, the uh, double. So this is how your, your doubles and your triples. You wouldn't want your first scoring round also counting towards the double. You would just have those two. So it all fairly straightforward. Okay, so uh, if we come out of here and we go into the round setup, or I could have just double clicked in the, uh, in the, in the, the table there but we'll just go in and find the tournament that we're working with and I'll grab Lauren to 221. So you link it to her entry and you link it to obviously session. Uh, we've got with lookups here. Uh, the event is automatically populated, the round that she's shooting, the class, the bow type and the boss position. At the moment you have to put those in manually when we've got the target map. Hopefully these will be self-populating and then define whether this counts towards a single and a double. Again this is the second session that she shot so it can't count towards a single trophy, it can only count towards a double. So that's basically setting up the tournament um, and you can obviously add that information into the system as people are registering. 
on the day we've got a check-in so we'll just go into test and I can see all the people that are um, scheduled to shoot at this particular shoot um, if I'm trying to watch payments I can say give me everybody that hasn't paid so I need to chase Lauren for her money because she hasn't paid alternatively I can see who has or who has not checked in so I can tell the judge that we're actually waiting on Lauren and Arthur at the moment and if um, I've only got one club here but if um, I've got many people from lots of different clubs let's say somebody from Northampton Archery Club was to the chairman was to come up and say who have you got at Northampton Archery Club here already I'd be able to say okay well these are the people that are shooting today and these are the people that are actually here uh, I've just got some test data here so all I've got are um, just just a single single club and we'll clear the filters so that's a nice way of checking who has arrived and, and who's yet to arrive with the scores now this is a brilliant part of the system that I absolutely love and um, we haven't got any scores in the system at the moment um, so we'll actually put those in now and I'm actually going to be looking at putting those in in real time because what we can do is we can put these in single-handed and you'll see just how easy it is so to start with you put in the round ID off of your score sheet which is 223 hit return we then put the number of hits in so 60 hits and I hit a number the number of hits entered appears to be greater than the maximum number of hits for this round. The reason being that we're shooting a Bray round, which you can only have 30 hits for, because in another part of the system where you set up the rounds, you can define the number of hits, the number of, maximum number of hits, maximum number of goals, and the maximum score. So if we change that to 30, and this particular individual had uh, 30 golds, and they had a score of 214, and then we hit return these figures are now grey so they can't be changed and if we hit return again it will be the same as clicking the save scores button it clears the screen prompts us for the next uh, set of data that we need to key in and what I could now do is to pass my sheet to somebody sitting on the right hand side of me and I'm actually going to make this text a bit bigger so it's a bit clearer but they can actually be checking the hits, goals and the score double checking me while I'm keying in the data because obviously there could be uh, a keying error um, as you are entering data in so they can be looking at the sheet and say yes it was 30 hits, 30 goals with a score of 214 at the same time I'm keying in additional data now just to show how quickly you can actually enter data into the system I'm going to be quiet and I'm just going to fill in the rest of these scores for these people Now you're going to have to believe me that they were actually keyed in in real time. I know I went quiet there, um, but uh, if you don't believe me, I'll do a WebEx and I'll actually show you those going in. I obviously didn't talk because it's difficult to talk and key them in accurately. My computer, I've got a number pad on the right-hand side, so all of that data entry is literally one-handed. You do not take your hand off the keyboard, you don't need the mouse. It is really easy, and I promise you, you can put your scores into this system blindingly fast once you are proficient on the uh, on the number pad um, if we then go back to the entries now and I'll bring up uh, Lauren's record here then you can see that we've actually got the scores have now come in um, as we put them in obviously the double rounds we just got uh, the information there which is adding those together but nothing for for the triple uh, we've also got within the system a leaderboard so the first thing we need to do is to grab our tournament and you can see all of the people within the tournament and uh, what rounds they were shooting etc and there's a number of ways of filtering obviously you can filter by club it's not going to work in this one because we've all got uh, just the one club but I might want to see all of those people that shot the Bray one I might want to see everybody that um, was shooting Rico Senior Gents 
I might want to see everybody that's working on a double for instance so just clicking on these um, prompts here you can filter the data very quickly and easily alternatively you can click on the red button to turn on the filtered search and now all of these prompts come live so what I could say is give me everybody that was shooting a Portsmouth and all uh, just the senior gents um, shooting a single round run the filtered search and I can see that I've just got one archer fulfilling that criteria. Um, I can clear the filters to get me back to where I started. With the partners leaderboard, I've just got one set of partners defined in here, but if I have multiples, you would have your partners listed here with the hits, goals, and the score, so you can see how your partners are doing. And I'm not sure what I'm going to have for the team leaderboard. Uh, okay, I've got a bit of information here, so you can see that. Surprise, surprise, my new club for testing is uh, at the top of the tree here, and you can see that uh, the, what's uh, the archers that are making up that club, and the fact that I need to have you know at least uh, one lady within that tournament. So, this is a way of seeing which of your clubs is, uh, is leading your tournament. Okay, so that's your leaderboard, and then of course, we've got the reports. Um, we've still got access to the report writer. A lot of these reports are still being written, so I haven't got the, the proper graphics. But what I can do is say, give me my single session results. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a tournament that uh, has been run before. So 1301-2013, I think is the date and show you a report for a tournament, real tournament. Now, this is not sensitive data, this is data that is published on the web, so I'm okay to show this. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so you can see this is the type of report that's produced. Um, it's in category order, so I've got my Bebo, Gent Senior, I can see my gold, silver and bronze with the hits, goals and the score for reading out and a bare bow, a compound, all of those results produced that quickly. And I've got the same for double sessions and triple sessions and also for the teams. We'll grab this better tournament with a bit more data in it. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. data a bit bigger so you can see here when Emperor Open Archery Club they won this particular competition that was the score made up of these individuals in this particular um, tournament we just wanted three people in the tour in the, the team um, with one being a lady so NAC was second you can see how quickly and easily you can get the information out of the system it's also reports to see your entries by name, entries by class, target, produce a target list, produce an entry register. And these reports are going to change because um, they're using the old tournament method that I was using, not this new tournament um, module. So those are the reports that we've got in the system thus far. And obviously this list will be growing as more reports are required. Uh, I hope you find this video useful. I'm very excited about this module and looking forward to putting it to test in a couple of rural tournaments that are coming up over the next couple of months. In the meantime, I'm going to continue working on getting the system fi finished. Thanks very much for your time. See you again. Bye-bye.